Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week's riff is going to be from the song Best of My Love by The Emotions. It's the main riff that you hear through most of the tune and it's a great line to play for beginners. This riff is just one of a whole set that you can practice over at TalkingBass.net. The essential bass riff list is part of the practice room in the totally free members area. Just sign up for free and gain access to loads and loads of exclusive bass content. You can download the practice track and the PDF of the riff and the riffs are all divided by difficulty level. Also, if you like this video, be sure to check out all the other videos at the lesson map where there's hours and hours and hours of other free lessons on all aspects of bass playing from beginner to advanced levels. So first of all, let's just have a listen to that riff along with the backing track. So now I'll just go through the notes of that riff one at a time, just step by step, and it can be divided up into two halves, so I'll, I'll address each half separately. So it's in F major, and we start on the root note, the F, okay? So that F there, so that's the third fret of the D string, that's played with the second finger. So F, F, E, so that E second fret of the D string, okay? So that's second finger to the first finger, so F, F, E. Then we play E again and then down to the D. So this is fifth fret of the A string. That's with the fourth finger. So, so F, F, E, E, D. Okay. So next we come down to the C, uh, third fret of the A string, and then we work up with the little, uh, little line here. So we've got C, D, E. So third fret of the A string, fifth fret of the A string, and then second fret of the D string. So that's with the second finger, fourth finger, first finger. So all together that line. So second finger, first finger, fourth finger, second finger, fourth finger, first finger. F, F, E, E, D, D, C, D, E. Okay? So that was the first half of the riff, now we can move to the second half. So this one's almost the same, so we start off with the F there. So we've got the F to the E again, but then when we get down to the D, we have another little run up. So we've got D, E, F, so D, fifth fret of the A string, E, second fret of the D string, and then F, third fret of the D string. Fourth finger, first finger, second finger. Then the C, D, E again, which we had in the first riff. C, D, E. Second finger, fourth finger, first finger. That's the third fret, fifth fret, both on the A string, second fret of the D string. So, that line. Again. Okay, and that's all there is to the riff. So if we put those two lines together, you get this very slowly. And that's the whole thing. So now we'll just try through twice. So once you've got that riff under your fingers, you can start to work through the backing tracks. Now I've provided them over at TalkingBass.net and they work in ascending order from 90 beats per minute through to 116. So let's just try at the original at 90 beats per minute. Thank you. 
So once you've nailed it at that tempo, you can just build up through the tracks. Okay, so we've got 90, 100, 110, 116. So here it is at full speed. <laughs> So now let's have a look at a few little extra elements to that bass line. First of all, it's worth paying attention to the note duration. Now, if we were to just play that bass line again, but just holding all the notes for the full duration, it'd sound like this. Okay, so that doesn't sound right. It's just not got that same feel at all. And this is a really, really, really important part to uh, learning how to play bass because the note durations, you know, the rhythms are the same, but the note durations are different, okay? So we've got more of that staccato feel. So we've got... Okay, and that adds a little bit more of an agitated feel to it, more, and there's more drive there. When you hold the notes on, in whatever bass line it is, so if I play this... tell it's got more of a laid back kind of hazy feel to it. The less uh, that I hold those notes on, so the more staccato I make them, the more drive they have, the more momentum because there's more tension in there. So we've got... Okay, so that was a little bit more detached and now very staccato. So... You know, it, it, uh, there's a lot of degrees in between. Um, you know, very, very staccato would probably be a little bit too much for this. You know, that's a little bit too spiky. But, um, but yeah, so that's how note duration has an, uh, has an impact. And notice that the last note of the, of the line... I'm holding that one, okay? So you really need to pay attention to all the note durations uh, within them, and that's what gives you the, the overall feel. Sometimes if you're playing some of these bass lines, uh, uh, any bass line really, any riff, you might find that it just doesn't feel right, that there's something not there, there's something missing, and often it's this note duration. You know, you might have just got one of the notes um, a little bit more uh, staccato, or you might be holding it on for too long, and you might have just not realised. So it's really something to pay attention to. So now let's just try a little exercise to practice that note control, okay? So all I want you to do is take a C, third fret of the A string, and we're just gonna play it on each beat at a slow tempo, okay? Now the first thing we wanna do is just play it for held notes, you know, just held right through it. So that'll sound like this. And you can hear how that's just held right through. So to do that, I'm just keeping that finger held down tight, you know, nothing happening there, and just plucking. And I'm not letting anything disrupt that, that string, okay? So I don't want any, you know, I don't want to release pressure at all. I don't want these fingers catching on the string. I don't want this finger, any fingers here catching on the string. Just a nice, clean note, okay? So that's the first step. Now, to cut a note off, to choke it, just in case you, uh, you're you not very good at this or you've never tried it before, the first thing that you can do is just release pressure on that finger on the neck, okay? So, like that. So you can see here, so I'm just cutting it off there with that finger. So I'm just releasing pressure. I'm not taking the finger off the string, I'm just... It's still attached to the string, it's still laid there, but I'm just releasing the pressure so I'm not pushing down. And it just cuts the note off. So that's the first thing to practice, just practice cutting off a note, just when you want to, so there. So you can do it whenever. Okay, so that's how to cut it off. Now you can also, because that can be quite... Um, well, that is a good way to do it, but it can be inconsistent sometimes, depending on where you are on the neck. So to reinforce that, you can use the other fingers here, just around that part, round about this knuckle down here, to just come down and help out. 
okay? So I'm releasing the pressure and simultaneously bringing these fingers down just to lay there on the string in exactly the same way that we're doing with that first finger. So no pressure down on the neck at all, I mean on the fretboard. So we're not pushing the string down, we're just lay, resting the fingers lightly against the string, okay? So I'm simultaneously releasing the pressure with that first finger and bringing those fingers down. Now what you can also do <laughs> with this hand is that you can just place the finger back on the string. So you can see there, bringing the finger down on there. So we've got three different things working there and each one of those would work in its own way. Like if I was to hold that, I can actually just mute, choke it with that finger or I could just choke it with those. It's a little bit harder just using those fingers, but we will usually want to bring that finger, release pressure on the note, you know. But all three of them together, you've got a nice choke there. We're cutting that string off and you know, there's no, there's no sound there, okay? So that's the first thing to practice. So now you can choke that note. Let's try a little bit more of a detached uh, exercise. So again, we're gonna play on each beat, but this time we're gonna play half, uh, half the duration, okay? So we've got, Okay, so the count will be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So we're choking on the and. So if we were to compare that with our original, there's full health, full note duration. Now, and two and three and four and, okay? So once you've practiced this choking for a while, you can go the other extreme and you can just try very staccato notes, or very detached, very short. So that'll sound like this. So it's exactly the same technique. You know, I'm releasing pressure with that finger, I'm bringing these fingers down slightly, and I'm using this finger here to come back down on the string and it gives us a very clean note and very clean cut off. So. Okay, so again, very, you know, exactly the same technique, it's just that I'm doing it, you know, a little bit earlier than I was before. And um, when you do the press down with the first finger, it very much feels like you're stabbing at the note slightly. You know, you're just stabbing it on there, so you're only, you know, only on the, uh, pushing it down for a very, very short period of time. You're just stabbing at it there. So, once you've nailed that, you can then put all three together. So let's just try the exercise. We'll try one bar of each. So we'll try full held duration, half time, and then staccato. Okay, so. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and two, three, four. Okay, so that's just something to try, just to you know master that note duration thing. And uh, once you've tried that, then you can go back to playing "Best of My Love," and it'll hopefully help with the groove. So now, if we try working through the "Best of My Love" groove again, have a listen to the note durations. <laughs> So when I come back up from those little runs, I'm holding those ones. The rest of them aren't completely staccato, but there's a, you know, they're fairly detached. Held. 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 Okay, so again, slowly. So now you have the bass line under your fingers and you've got your note control in, uh, in check. Uh, let's just have a quick uh, look at the, how the riff's built. So we'll give it a little analysis and just see how everything works in there. So this riff's in F major, so the whole song's in F major. So that's gonna be using the F major scale. So let's have a look at the F major scale in that position where we're playing the, uh, playing the riff. And we'll start down here at this F. So if we just work through it, we've got F, first fret of the E string, G, third fret of the E string, A, fifth fret of the E string. 
then we go up to B flat, first fret of the A string, C, third fret of the A string, D, fifth fret of the A string, so, so far. And then we've got E, second fret of the D string, and F, third fret of the D string. So it's a little bit of a stretch, that one. It's a first finger uh, major scale. And in that position, yeah, it can be, you know, a fair stretch down there. So don't worry about completely stretching it. Just pivot the thumb. Okay, so when you play that with the first finger, you can just pivot the thumb, thumb slightly and just move up so that we're in that position. Then B flat, pivot, and then we're okay for the top. So that's that F major scale that we're using for that riff. So now let's have a look at how that riff relates to that scale. So we start at the top of the F and then we just come down through the scale. So F, F, E, E, D, D, C. So that has just descended through that major scale. And then we come back up. So we've just come down through the F major scale and come down to the C and then come back up. But of course, because there's a, a bit of rhythm there, it's um, it's less noticeable. You, don't, you know, and when you hear it, you don't just think, "Oh, it's coming up and down a scale or down and up a scale." So now for the second one, we get down to the D, come back up, and then up from the C. But again, it's all just from the F major scale. So. And it's um, when, well, when you see things like this with a major scale or minor scale or whatever it is, when you can see the scale that it's been built from, that palette of notes, it can make learning it a lot easier. So if you know the F major scale, you don't have to just sit there thinking, okay, well, this riff, it starts on the third fret, then it's the second fret, and then, you know, thinking like that, or even thinking, oh, well, it's this kind of pattern. If you already know the, the F major scale, let's say, you just think, oh, work down it down to the C and back up. Very simple. Then you just have to remember the rhythm. So learning scales like this, arpeggios, those kind of things, can make learning riffs a lot, lot easier because you're relating to them to something that you've already digested, you know, that, that you've assimilated in the, you know, your mental toolbox, you know, you're just relating it to something that you already know. Now, seeing a riff like this in relation to the parent major scale of the key is fairly useful, but it's more important to see how it relates to the chords and the chord progression. And uh, that can completely reveal how the bass line was written and hopefully, you know, help you in creating your own bass lines. So if we work through the chords, we're uh, in the key of F, obviously. So we've got F major, so that's chord one. Then we've got C major, but it's over E, okay? So we've got C major over an E bass, okay? So that's got the third in the bass. So if you think of the notes of C major, C, E, G, first, third, fifth, we've got that third there as the lowest note. And it sounds a bit different. So there's the C major, but first inversion sounds like this. You can hear that E down there in the bass. So, got F major. That's the C over E. Then we've got D minor. And then we're back to C major, but this time it's root position. We've just got it normal C, C in the bass. Okay, so that's the chord progression. And if you're okay with the numbering system, you know, within the key, uh, like I said, that was chord one. Then we had chord five, the C, but with the third in the bass, so that's chord five. Then we have chord six, the D minor, and then back to chord five. So it's a one, five, six, five progression, okay? So um, that's the chords. Now, if we relate this bass line to those chords, you can understand exactly how the, how the bass line was made. So, we start on the F, so remember the chord is an F, so we've got the F there, then it drops to the E, remember it, the next chord was C with the E in the bass, so we're just outlining the chord progression, C, sorry, F, E, then we're down to the D, remember the next chord was D minor, so again we're just playing the root notes of the chords, F, F, E, D minor, and then we were back to C major, okay? And then we just come in up the scale to come back. 
Okay, and then if you were to look at that in relation to the chord, we'd have root, then we've got the second and the third. So we're using the, the uh, D there as a passing note between the root and the third. Okay, but don't worry too much about that. So again, we're just outlining the chord progression. That's how this riff was made, because it's quite easy to look at it and think, oh, well, it's just using an F major scale. But it's more, um, it's more important to know that it's working through the chord progression. So, okay, now on the second line, exactly the same thing. Coming down through the chord progression, F major, E, C over E. Then we've got the D minor, so we come up, and then C major again. D minor, C major. So, as I said, looking at the chords, you can really see how this bass line has been created. It just followed the root notes of the chords. That's it. So hopefully that gives you a little something to take away from the riff, aside from just learning the standard notes like you normally would. If you're a beginner and that all seems a little bit too much for now, don't worry, just concentrate on nailing the riff and worry about all the details later. It's a great little riff that's easy to play and gives you something to practice uh, in that kind of driving dance feel. Okay, see you later.